Okay, uh, we're going to introduce uh, pyramids, cones, and spheres right now. This one is going to be called a pyramid. It's P Y R A M I D. Um, a pyramid can have any type of polygon for a base, although typically what you see is a square for a base. You'll also see occasionally triangular base pyramids. Uh, less common, but still possible, a uh, rectangular base, or, or sorry, pentagon base or rectangular base. Um, we won't deal with these until level four. Um, everything we'll do until then will be level, uh, will be with the square base. Um, the aspects of pyramid, well, we'll call this the side length because it's a square. So the area of the base is just the area of that square right there. And then you have, um, you have the height. The height of the pyramid is from the center of the base to the vertex. This is not the height. This is the height. This distance here is called the slant height. And see, this is the height. Um, so here's some formulas. Um, the area of a pyramid is one third area of the base times the height. What you notice is that the slant height is not part of it. So if we want to do the area of the base, we take the area of this square we would multiply by this height, and then we multiply by one-third, or divide by three. Um, but that's the formula, and that's all you need to know for level one. This one here is a cone. Now, if you think about it, a square, a square can be the base of a pyramid, a triangle can be the base of a pyramid, a pentagon can be the base of a pyramid, a rectangle can be the base of a pyramid. What if a circle was the base of a pyramid? What would you have? You'd have a cone. So, a cone, is actually just another pyramid. And that being the case, it actually works exactly like a pyramid, which means the volume formula is also one third area of the base times the height. So that's pretty cool. It's kind of two for the price of one. Um, the last one we have here is called a sphere. And the sphere is the hardest one to figure out um, because, well, it's, it's just sort of an infinite circle. Um, this is the radius. The volume, I can't explain this formula. I don't actually even know how it was made. It's a great formula, though. It goes like this. 4 over 3 pi times the radius cubed. Even though I can't explain it, I can give you some tricks to help memorize it. After all, remember that volume is three-dimensional. That's how you can remember that there's a three underneath. And, of course, that's how you can remember that it's cubed. So that can be very helpful. So that's the volume formulas. Um, let's do a little thing to kind of help visualize the, the surface area formulas. So here's a pyramid. This distance here is a slant height. This distance here is the height. As you can tell, the slant height is always going to be more than the height because it has to fold down to bring it down to the level of the height. Um, this distance here is the side length. If we're going to think about how a pyramid's uh, surface area is figured, the best way to do is to turn it into a net. So here's what the net of a pyramid looks like. It's a square flanked by four triangles. And see, if you look at it in this context, the base of the triangle is equal to the side of the square, and the height of the triangle is equal to the slant height of the pyramid. So it's going to be S times uh, slant height, because it's base times height, divided by two for each one of these. And there are four of them. So let's look a little bit at how that works. It's base times height divided by two, and there's four of them. So that crosses out and you get that. So in other words, it's two times the side length times the slant height uh, plus two S squared for the area of the base. That marker, sorry. Two S squared. So two times Again, the reason for that is that it's four triangles. 
So this is the base of the triangle, this is the height of the triangle. Four and the two cross out to make a two in the numerator. And this is your full um, surface area formula for a uh, pyramid. Um, what we'll get with the cone is actually very similar. A cone works like this. You've got your cone and you can see your slant height right there and then the height. And just like with the pyramid, the slant height will always be greater than the height. The reason being that the slant height has to tilt back to be equal to the height. Um, cone is made of a circle and then a sector of a larger circle because this distance here has to wrap accurately around this circle. Um, so, without explanation, <laughs> the surface area is going to be equal to the area of the base plus uh, pi times the radius times the slant height. Now the radius is the radius of this circle. So it's this times this times pi plus the area of the base, which is the area of the circle. So that's pi r squared. So in this case, a base means pi r squared. So you put that in. Um, that's the area of the base there. So we have area of the base plus pi r slant height for the, the cone. Here we have area of the base plus 2 side length times slant height. So basically when you break it down, we have slant height here, slant height here, area of the base here, area of the base here, and you have pi radius here, and 2s here. So they're very similar if you analyze them. Um, we'll get a lot of practice on that. Lastly, the volume, um, oh, sorry, the, the sphere, well, here's the sphere. I have no idea how they figured out the uh, surface area of a sphere. Um, if it was a circle, the area of the circle would be pi times the radius squared. It just so happens that the sphere equals exactly four circles. So, surface area equals four pi times the radius squared. And that's all there is to it. It's just like, see, the circle area formula times four. That's it. That's the bottom line. Um, so level one is going to be basically just to identify the formulas uh, and to match the nets for these, which is really simple, and to identify slant height height, side length. Um, level two is going to be solving some problems by plugging in. Should be pretty simple. Good luck. See you Tuesday.